Well, how about them Raiders? Uh, get a 37-29 victory over the San Diego Chargers. You know, it's always great to win an AFC West rivalry game. It's especially nice to beat San Diego in their home turf. But this win over the weekend was one of the most satisfying that I think the Raider Nation has had in, you know, about five years. In fact, the last time I think the Raiders had a, a victory this uh, sort of galvanizing, this encouraging, was probably back in 2010, back during the heyday of Bruce Kratikowski when uh, the Raiders went to Denver and just ran the Broncos out. And, you know, the thing is, you look at the score, 37-29, uh, it looks fairly competitive. Folks, this game was over and done with at halftime. Uh, actually, it was done like in the third quarter. The Raiders were leading 37-6 to after they just took their foot off the gas pedal and basically slipped to San Diego, chalk a bunch of garbage points. It was nowhere near as close to the score that you have. And, you know, I've been saying this for, for pretty much the entire season. You know, you look at the Raiders team, and, you know, you saw, see them play. And they had the game against uh, Cleveland, and they had the game against Baltimore. We are just looking at them, and we are like, wow, you know, they're really getting the ball rolling offensively. You know, you got Amari Cooper out there. you got Seth Roberts. Uh, you got uh, Michael Crabtree out there just racking up 100 yards a game. you got Latavius Murray going out there, getting 100 yards rushing. Derek Carr throwing for 300 yards. I mean, it's a really good-looking offense. And, you know, this is going to propel them some really close games against uh, some teams over there in the AFC is it, is it East. No, it was AFC North. And then even with the loss against Denver before the bye, where they went in there and they lost 16 to 10. But, I mean, still, they looked really good defensively. Even when they couldn't get the ball rolling offensively, they at least had a really good uh, uh, run-stop defense. And you're thinking to yourself, you know, if somehow this team, this young, really spirited, Encouraging Raiders team can actually combine that really potent uh, run stop defense with that explosive offense we saw in those uh, week two and week three. I mean, we've really got a great team. We've got a team that can actually win some games that might, might just contend for a playoff spot this year. And of course, over the bye week, we saw that come to fruition. And in this game, it was just rolling. The Raiders come out 37 to 6. Uh, they scored on their first seven possessions. Uh, Marquette King didn't even have to punt the ball until late in the third quarter. Like I said, it was just a dominant, dominant, dominant performance by the Raiders in pretty much every category. Um, just absolutely running all over um, the Chargers. Uh, Derek Carr, I don't know the stats off my head, but I'm pretty sure he got about 300 or so yards. Maybe not 300, but at least close to it. Uh, once again, proving my theory right that as long as Amari Cooper gets 130 yards, the Raiders will win a game. Uh, that was the case. Latavius Murray did crack 100, but he got pretty hard uh, there. I believe Derek Carr, he hit, what was it, eight different receivers at one point. Well over eight receivers during the game. Uh, really high completion ratio. But again, you know, it's the Raiders' defense that has come out there in tandem with that great offense. We saw Amari Cooper do that dazzling run. Uh, we saw Seth Roberts get some points on the board. We saw Michael Crabtree get some really big pickups. And you, know, you look at the supporting cast. You look at the Riveras. You look at the uh, Taiwan Jones. You look at Hilo. You look at Marcel Reese. You look at all these other guys. And these guys are doing their part too. It's not just you know Amari Cooper. It's just not Michael Crabtree. It's not just Latavius Murray. It's everybody on this team kind of pulling their weight. And if you're a Raiders fan, you can't help but feel optimistic. I mean, this is after, you know, a really, really bad lull. This team is looking great. I mean, it's the best squad we've had since at least 2011. And that was a team that was one game away from making the playoffs. And just going forward, if the Raiders can keep playing like this, if they can keep the ball moving, you know, and there was a point in the game where I think they were averaging nine yards per play. Not, not, not drive, per play. I mean, that's just absolutely flabbergasting. And like I said, again, stopping the run, they just look fantastic. Uh, the secondary got toward towards the end, but really, like I said, they took the foot off the gas pedal long before then, so that's somewhat understandable. You know, personally, I would have loved to see the Raiders put the foot on the throat and just kept balling them and just, you know, pounding them down and win this game like 42-6 to six, or like 50-12. to like 12. But you know what? A W is a W, and with this, they improved to 3-3 three and three on the season. They're back at 500. Uh, they're in the second in the West. I think they're, if you look at the AFC standings, 
Yeah, this win puts them about the seventh seed. So they're just outside the playoffs looking in. And as far as the season, look, I'm not going to come out here and do any bold proclamations. I mean, this is a really good-looking team. I don't think they're there yet. They still have some pieces they need to work on. we got to improve the corners. I think they need at least one more back to kind of get this ball rolling. Uh, but just overall, you know, it's a good team. It's a great, great young team who I think is really, really emerging as a, as a powerhouse out of the AFC. Um, the way the Chargers and Chiefs are playing, the Raiders are going to finish second in the AFC West for sure. You know, I want to see them kind of give the Broncos a struggle. I want to see uh, Denver, you know, start going down. I mean, obviously, this is a team that's not as good as their record would have us believe. Peyton Manning is probably his worst season he's ever had. I think mean, the team is just waiting to collapse. So I'd love to see the Raiders be the beneficiaries of that, but it still seems statistically unlikely. Um, you know, I'm still hoping for, you know, a 9-7 and seven season. You know, I think 8-8, eight and eight, considering, you know, the way we've been playing the last couple of seasons, that would be a minor victory. But I want to see these guys put up a winning record. We haven't had one since 2002. So uh, we'll see what happens. But just the way the Raiders are playing today, I mean, like I said, you know, it's just absolutely inspiring. It gives me hope. There's a lot of optimism I have for this team that I didn't have, you know, heading into the bye week. And we'll see. Uh, as far as the rest of the season, 10 games left. You know, hoping they win at least six out of those. Some tough ones on the road. Uh, we got a uh, well, tough ones at home, too. I mean, you got a real mixed bag. You got games that should be fairly winnable. You know, you got Titans, you got the Lions, uh, you got the Chiefs, you got the Chargers again, along with some, some tough ones. You got Green Bay, uh, you got Pittsburgh, you got the Jets next week. So we'll see. Uh, this is a team that's got a lot of potential, that's got a lot of upswing, and I think we saw that blueprint. You know, if they can keep playing like they did today, this is a team I think can be at least competitive and push towards 9-7. and seven. But really, you know, at the end of the day, you really can't walk away from this game other than just being really enthusiastic if you're a member of the Raider Nation. So hopefully this is the first of many, many offensively impressive uh, defensive showcase victories you're going to be seeing a whole lot more of in the future, whether it's in Oakland, L.A., San Antonio, whatever. If you're a Raider fan, you've got plenty to be happy about right now.